Welcome back to the show, everybody. How about this for a starter to the show? Crypto Dad, former CFTC chairman, says it's happening. What's he talking about? He's talking about the new financial system for the world. That's what the hell he's talking about. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. And how about that new intro? Shout out to Mike Jansen. Yeah. Appreciate you, my brother. I'm loving it. Loving the energy in his voice, the way he lays that intro out. I really dig it. I want to hear what you guys think of the intro, too. Make sure you leave a, uh, a comment in the comment section below if you like the new intro. I'm digging the heck out of it. I hope you guys do, too. $2.248 trillion market cap for crypto. We were up just over 1%. Let's be careful what we call progress. But I'll tell you what. Forget about the TA news just for a second. And I love the technical analysis, and I certainly loved all of the experts that we rely on out here. But today we're going to focus on some fundamental news that is aligning to a great degree. And I'm telling you from what I hear of what we're going to listen to today, this seems like a very, very important year for the digital asset space and the payment protocols that will be the new internet of value right now bitcoin 46,900 plus ethereum 3800 plus and we see solana coming in 171 and change cardano is a dollar 34 xrp is 83 cents price range on xrp right now 0.8245 on the low side 0.8457 on the top don't forget i believe xrp can serve the world in all the things of value fiat money tokenized oil real estate metals market you name it that's right, all the money. The numbers are brought to you by Link2. Link2.com is private investing made simple, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be accredited in order to be able to buy private equity at the moment. But Link2 is working very hard with all the regulatory agencies to try to abolish those requirements as much as they can. And in the interim, if you are not, you should register with Link2 so you can get access to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of data points about all of these companies and these many different profitable sectors. Ripple's on the board right now, but you never know for how long, because I tell you, I played this guy yesterday and shout out to Darren Moore, who is a uh, a killer YouTuber and influencer and researcher in this space. And he, he should have 138,000 subs, not 38. But I'll tell you this. There's a moment in here that I want to cover that's a little bit different of a time marker that we covered the other day. This is Chamath Palapatia, former Facebook executive. I hope I didn't train wreck his name. Much respect. I want to bring you into this moment where he's talking about MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and other payment companies that are about to see a huge hit that they're going to take because their business models are a 2 to 3% charge to merchants for every transaction that's done by swiping a card. What he's pointing to is the replacement of these new tech companies. I give an example like Ripple and XRP, XLM and Stellar, and other companies that are positioned in this way to serve to, to, to this transition to this new financial system that will allow for very efficient, low-cost uh, payments to be done cross-border and instant settlement and otherwise. He's going to tell you that he believes a short play is in the works for these payment companies like Visa, American Express, MasterCard. And I want you to listen to what he says here because he's going to go on to explain some things. And then he's going to tell you after he's being asked, well, what do you mean by this is going to happen swiftly? Do you mean five to eight years? And you will be stunned by his answer. Check this out. Anybody in those traditional infrastructure and rails versus anybody in this new infrastructure and rails will be, it will look like a no-brainer. Do you years consider years. the buy now, pay later companies like a firm and Upstart or whatever? I don't know if Upstart fits in that category, but some of these buy now, pay later businesses as being the alternative to the traditional payment networks, or do you think no. that it's a different business? No, I, right now, I think what, what buy now, pay later is, is, is a rate arbitrage. Right. When, as you said earlier, rates are very, very low, so the cost of capital is low. But it again starts to habituate the consumer experience to, I don't need to pay these usurious rates to these three credit card companies to facilitate a transaction. 
of money that I already have or money that I'm good for. That's the big idea, right? And so when you translate that into Web3 in a good project or a good series of projects, you're not going to need these companies. And so it's going to, I think, eviscerate trillions of dollars of market cap. Well, not cap to mention you also companies. have in between these two, Venmo. He said, I think it's going to eviscerate trillions of dollars within these companies before he was interrupted and overrun by this gentleman right here. But let's keep listening. And Cash right. App, which are not crypto, but they certainly as brands mean more to young well, this people is what I mean. like, do you think, than do you Visa think, and MasterCard. Yeah, do you think Block used to be called Square is a good pair trade against Visa and MasterCard <laughs> in this context? Yeah, I like it. You know, I think that, that that starts to get closer to to the truth. My my perspective is you can kind of short anybody who's public because anybody who's public can really only be public or will go public because they feast off of this artificial two or three percent transaction fee. Everybody does. The companies you want to be long are those private companies in crypto that you can read the white papers of, whose protocols have utility and who's building some element of infrastructure that replaces a traditional business. If you haven't heard anything, I'm telling you right now, he's giving you the keys to the golden kingdom right here. I tell you, this is keys to the kingdom right here, uh, as far as I'm concerned, not financial advice. But I tell you this, you know, what he's explaining to me is the long game that Ripple has been in by creating the market infrastructure that is going to allow them to be a rising phoenix because he's explaining that there will be a huge disruption as these payment companies, that if they're a public company, by default, they are victim to the model that exists today, which is two to 3% transaction fees off of every merchant that swipes a credit card when something is purchased or paid for. And that is a fact. And what he is saying here is when this moment takes place, you're going to hear him go on and say that when this moment takes place, it will have to happen swiftly because they are going to be eviscerated from a large portion of their business model and how they make their money, which means the transition cannot be a slow transition. It must be swiftly done so they can recover as quickly as possible with integrating to these new payment protocols. Listen. So as long as you can kind of build those things up, Balaji, for example, had a bunch of tweets this weekend where he was like, you know, I, he has this idea for a mirror table. What is that? That replaces, you know, cap table management, right? Now, why is that important? Well, it's because it touches all of these really important KYC, AML, investing laws across all these countries in all of these places. It's just a very simple example of where the new company that actually builds that capability of these mirror tables will do so at virtually no cost. And so it'll have a 50-person team. And so they're not going to have offices all over the world. Their cost basis will be you know, an order, order or two orders of magnitude well, I mean, cheaper. Let's face it, Visa and MasterCard became a tax. It you took can't them decades with these and companies. decades to have that power over folks. And, 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 and they, but I think a firm does break that. A firm breaks it because yeah. the people who are selling then decide, you know what? We'll give a little bit of a discount here to get more people to buy. Go ahead. They, they, that is the velocity of money. We'll give a discount here to get more people to buy. That is how you create the velocity of money and really accelerate growth inside of a company and an industry. They were the classic network monopoly, network effect monopoly business, right? Like they got the small businesses, they got the credit cards and uh, by extension, the consumers on the network. And ultimately they created these these absolutely locked in networks. Um, But as with all networks, complacency kind of you know, drives innovation and this fueled innovation that we're seeing is now starting to figure out ways to not just crack their way into the network, but to replace them with an entirely different model. And last point on this, this is not one where I think this disruption happens slow. Here we go. I think it happens swiftly. Swiftly. Now, listen, <laughs> I mean, listen, look at the confidence of this gentleman right here. Disruption happens slow. I think it happens swiftly. Swiftly being five to 10 years? No, like in a year. Yeah, tomorrow swiftly in like five to 10 years? No, like in a year. Because that's how drastic it will be for these payment companies when they switch over 
to this new system. And you say to yourself, but Brad, we've been here a long time. We all realize a lot of this. Why hasn't it happened? I'm telling you that this case that the ripple is in, ripple is in with the SEC is a vetting process. It needs to have legal precedent when it's settled. We know that the legal analysts like the Logan Hogan uh, legal team, excuse me, uh, has told us April, May at the latest here, and this case is over and it could settle any day. Now, let's take a look at this. Christian Carlo, Crypto Dad, shout out to you, my friend. Former CFTC chairman says it's happening. Shows Batten Systems that he's retweeted here. HSBC Wells Fargo used distributed ledger technology in FX payment trade via bank automation. That's happening. That is falling in line with what Chamath has just shared with all of us that it will happen swiftly within a year. Well, if it's within a year and HSBC and Wells Fargo are not exactly corner stores, ladies and gentlemen, that means that year is now, is what it's telling me. And when I look at this, we see Batten Systems, distributed ledger technology. What does all this mean? The system had settled $250 million of closed business day Wednesday, according to Mark Williamson, global head of FX partnerships and propositions at HSBC. Reminder, Marcus Treacher, formerly of HSBC, was at Ripple for a very long time, oversaw 11,000 employees while he was at HSBC before serving at Ripple and now has moved on. Nevertheless, I want to bring you back to this. Batten's core FX solution powers FX settlements for major banks, but Ripple with solutions powered by XRP is not the only player in the FX settlement town. Using blockchain technology among the firm's leading competitors is Batten Systems, which is founded by Ubixi in 2016. The latest news in the Batten Systems core FX solution powered by world's first interbank payment versus payment settlement outside of CLS, the core FX solution was built on Batten's proprietary distributed ledger technology and is governed by the Batten rulebook. No associated digital asset can be found on the cryptocurrency markets, though. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means it's like the way R3 started out without a token. And that tells me it's just like the gentleman Daniel Masters from CoinShares used to say that a platform without a token is really not worth fooling with because the advantage is to create liquidity with not only a platform that can be used with distributed ledger technology, but a native token to it so you can drive value into the asset and create liquidity in a new form of digital money. That's what's up. The solution enables banks to ta tackle risk in FX settlements generally and in emerging market currencies that sit outside the framework provided by the CLS system. This tells me, just by the design of this, that Batten Systems may be something that the banks like for their plug-in API situation that could eventually plug into the settlement and use of a digital asset like the XRP token on the XRP ledger. Don't believe it. I believe it's still true. It's a reminder that what they're talking about here is the same plan and alignment that not only we're seeing from Wells Fargo, HSBC, Crypto Dad's excitement. Chamath Palapatia, former executive, telling us it's going to be done swiftly within a year, not five to ten, because of the the pain that's going to be felt by that that changeover. They cannot draw it out. It must be a quick changeover. Flip of the switch, if you will. Swift plans to explore tokenized assets in the first quarter of this year. Swift announced his plans to venture into digital asset market next year, which is this year. This was right at the year's end of 21. Global provider of secure financial messaging services is planning to launch an innovative pilot in the first quarter that will see it explore interoperability in nascent asset tokenization market. Okay, so you can have batten systems all you want, but if it doesn't have a token that can settle things digitally, then it's about record keeping and it's about settling instantly fiat to fiat payments. And that is just means you have distributed ledger technology with the friction of the paper world still in it. 
not exactly a full circle solution. That's why I see it being very interoperable with the XRP ledger and the XRP token. Looking here is a reminder of what Chamath Papalapatia was telling us about the very companies that he cited that would take an immediate hit on their public stock value while transferring over into a relationship with these private fintech firms that have the technology to allow them to make this, this transformation into the, in the fourth industrial revolution of this new payment world. Visa acquires Ripple Partner Cl uh, Currency Cloud. And then they talked about also Visa acquires Partner Earthport. So we see the solutions. Visa is prepared for this swift changeover within a year period, as he predicts, right? We also know that MasterCard teams up with Ripple through Lulu and United Arab of Emirates to enhance remittances. They know who the solution is, and so does American Express. Every one of these companies were cited by Chamath Palapatia as their public value taking a hit to transfer from the old system to the new system. This tells me, because he believes it's going to happen within a year's time, maybe this year, maybe over the course of this year and part of next year. I don't know. But from what he says, we understand Ripple is an indirect solution to help with the problem. Doesn't stop there, because when we look at this article here, Ripple is orders of magnitude better than Swift GPI and correspondent banking protocols. Not exactly breaking news to a lot of us, but understanding that Swift themselves are going to be doing tokenization and settlement in the first quarter of this year. We understand that who is prepared to be able to help them with that solution the best? It's RippleNet. That's right. I believe at some point you will see a partnership, merger, or an acquisition of Swift and RippleNet because it is in Swift's best interest because they do not have the innovation. Swift GPI is not a solution. It is a improvement on what they have as a messaging system, but it still doesn't provide instant settlement. Instant payments are not instant settlement. There's a difference. Then as a reminder right here, when you're looking at this, this came out just today from Ripple. RippleNet's on-demand liquidity solution enables financial institutions to deliver instant cross-border payments without the need for pre-funding. Discover how Azimo uses on-demand liquidity to power faster international payments into Philippines. All of this is falling in alignment. This is where they highlight on RippleNet here, Azimo, and their Ripple's audience has significantly reduced the cost and delivery time for cross-border transfers, and our customers are seeing the benefits. This is a, an example for Azimo has already gotten herself into this new position. This will be the words and the quotes of the visas, of the MasterCards, and the American Expresses soon to follow. Write it down. This is Brad and Garlinghouse. This is exactly what's happening. And this is exactly what's happening. And I want you to hear here in his comment here where he is going to lay it down for you exactly what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is what Brad Garlinghouse is talking about. And it's a flip of the switch. Swell 2021. This is Brad Garlinghouse telling you what Ripple Net and on demand liquidity is primed to do for the world right now in the market we started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments large payments RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat based network could flip the switch to odl once the market was mature enough and this is exactly what's happening our fiat based network can flip the switch this is what we're talking about. This is the moment we are in. And I say this to you and realize that we are sitting at 83 cents because we do not have legal precedent on this asset and this new payment protocol technology. But I encourage you to understand this. The SEC has said of most recent to Fox Business News and Charles Gasparino that they have made no decision or clarity on any digital asset in this space. And should this case go to distance and it end between April and May, XRP will be the most vetted 
compliant digital asset on planet Earth and ask yourself when this swift transition within a year takes place and they prepare to flip the switch, as Brad Garlinghouse says, what do you think the solution will be for the financial world? That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below and share with somebody you know. Let me know how you feel about that new intro because I'm loving it. And make sure you check out all the links in the description and comment box. Great products and services I use each and every day. By the way, it is tax time and a year. Clinton Donnelly's the best. Foremost authority on crypto taxes. Check out his link in the description and comment box and I'll catch all of you on the next one.